Meneer die kanselier, ek het die eer om aan die voor te stel Johan van Seil met die versoek aan hom die graad doktor in die handelswetenskappe honoris causa te verleen. Die raad en die senaat het op grond van die volgende oorwegings besluit om aan hom hierdie graad te verleen. Dames en heren, Dr. Johan van Seil het as Sanlam Groep bestuurshoof die maatskapie met merkwaardige leiderskap en visie op een volgehouwe groeipad geplaas en een sociale, verantwoordelike, gediversificeerde financiële dienstegroep met de Afrika voetspoor oor 34 lande omskep. Met de doktersgraad in economie en de tweede doktersgraad in landbouw-economie begin Van Seil sy loobaan as akademikus en word hy op een jeugdige 40 reeds rektor van de Universiteit van Pretoria. Toch roept die corporatieve wereld en in 2003 sluit die voormalige professor aan Michigan Staatsuniversiteit en Wereldbank consultant om in besondere en in de besondere uitdagende tijd bij Sanlam aan. Met Sanlam sy aandeelprijs op een laagte punt moes Van Seil aanvaardbare opbrengste lever, regulatieveranderinge implementeer, relevante productreeks aan kliënte bied en 9000 personeellede vir die pad na groei motiveer. <coughs> Dit het hy uitnemend recht gekry. Ten sy uittrede in 2015 het die Sanlam aandeelprijs van 6 rand tot meer as 70 rand gestuig en die maatskapijse markwaarde van 14 miljard tot 170 miljard gegroei. Ladies and gentlemen, Johan van Seil's visionary executive leadership is particularly evident from three well-considered decisions. Firstly, he sold Sunlum share in EPSA to Barclays PLC. This enabled him to buy back undervalued Sunlum shares, create future value for stakeholders, and implement, implement this growth strategy. Secondly, he acquired African life, returning Sunlum to the lower income market after an absence of 12 years, as well as leading the company into the rest of Southern Africa, which has become a key part of its African growth strategy. Thirdly, Van Sale carried out and through a black economic empowerment transaction with Ubuntu Bortho. This transaction afforded Sanlam even greater domestic momentum, which later funded its growth strategy on the rest of the continent. In turn, Ubuntu Bortho obtained an 8% share in Sanlam, which grew to a stake of 14% within 10 years. The enormous success of this empowerment transaction paved the way for the establishment of the country's first fully-fledged black financial services company, African Rainbow Capital. This company, of which Van Seyl has recently been named chief executive, enjoys wide support as a vehicle to include the lower and mid-income markets in the formal economy. It is this extraordinary ability to achieve a miraculous corporate turnaround, which at the same time providing for emerging African markets needs that sets Van Seyl's contribution to the finance sector apart. Dr. Van Seyl's work wordt uit vele oorde erken. Hy word onder meer aangewees onder skuidelik Sunday Times en Media 24, die burger, sy sakeleier van die jaar. Cape Times, KPMG, sy persoonlijkheid van die jaar en ontvang in 2015 die All Africa prijs as top sakeleier in Suider-Afrika. Dr. Johan van Seyl het met uitmintende leiderskap en weergaloose visie verskye feisvoos beleggers weer hoop gegee. Sanlam, een gerekende rolspeler op die vastland gemaakt en met een knap bemachtigingstransaksie die weg vir die landse eerste volwaardige swart financiële dienstemaatskapie gebaan. Die eers vir Eerom as vandeldraar vir sake met een sociale gewete. Meneer die kanselier, ek versoek jy om die graad dokter in die handelswetenskap, Diekom Honoris Causa aan Johan van Seil toe te gen vir sy leiderskap om honderde duisende aandeelhouwerse beleggings op een volhoudbare groeipad te plaas, sy sociale verantwoordelijkheid om die lare inkomstemark by die formele ekonomie te betrek en sy visie om die weg vir die land sy eerste volwaardige swart financiële dienstemaatskapie te baan. Good afternoon, everyone. Dr. Johan van Seyl is being honored today for his major contribution to society, and in particular, the role he played at Sunlam as the former group CEO. Johan, notwithstanding your tremendous success 
at Sunlum, I think very few people know that your job at Sunlum was only your second job in the private sector. Johan's first job was a CEO of Suntum, and before that, he was obviously, as you've all heard this morning, the Vice Chancellor at University of Pretoria, where he was a well publicized and successful academic. Now, not many people know this, but in the first week of Johan's taking office at Sunlum, Johan got a rather interesting phone call. Now, Mr. Chancellor, it was one of those phone calls you mentioned this morning in your speech. His secretary alerted him that, Johan, there is a man on the line, and he says his name is P.W. Bota, Dr. Son, and he will meet you proud. And that was the under the great crocodile, and he had to bail him not too good. And you want me to deal. The first one was by a court, by a gelukt met zijn aanstelling, and the tweede one was that you want zijn geld by Sandra met verloren. I should be quick to say that Johan also got a call from a political leader on the other end of the political spectrum. And that was just before or long before he joined Sunlam in the 90s when he was a senior member at the World Bank in the US when he got a call from President Mandela himself asking him to return to South Africa to help build the country. It is something he did both as a revered academic but also as a very successful corporate leader at Sunlam. So if one wants to sum up Johan's success at Sunlam, and specifically aiming to, to quantify his success, it is, a, it is the rather simple fact that for each and every year that Johan was CEO of Sunlam, which is 12 years, he added on average 10 billion rand to the market value of Sunlum. That's billion with a B and not billion with an M. As you've heard this morning, taking the market value from about 14 billion in 2003 when he took office, to 170 when he stepped down in mid-2015 last year, to the benefit of all the stakeholders, policyholders and shareholders. Now, this performance really positioned Sunlum as the biggest non-banking financial services company on the African continent, spanning 34 countries. And uh, so I suppose the true measure of a man is really to take a present view of the success based on historical effort and with future impact to the benefit of as many stakeholders as possible. So I would like to propose a toast to Johan for his visionary leadership and his tenacious commitment to excellence in the financial services industry, both in South Africa and the rest of the continent, to achieve the best possible impact for its people. If you want to join me, please, to just raise your glasses to Johan. Meneer de kanselier, meneer de vice-kanselier, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much, Ainsley. It's very kind words. You know, you don't start out in life to to necessarily get these kinds of accolades and so forth. In fact, I started life with quite low expectations. I grew up on a farm and went to a farm school, as I told the story yesterday, as well at a different place here at the university. And the best year we had in school, we had one classroom at, at, at the farm school, and the best year we had in my first seven years at school, we had 30 kids in school, and the worst we had 18. And we had to compete in sports against the big schools and so forth, so I was pretty used to getting a hiding. So, uh, and from there, you know, I went to study agriculture that I knew before coming off a farm. And so on. I know my mother cried and, and, and she had no education or very little of it. Made sure her kids aspired to something higher. And uh, my mom said, son, you'll always be poor. And that, of course, is true. <laughs> and uh, 
So thank you very much to the university, firstly, for, for honoring me. It's, it's not something that you set out and that you expect, but uh, it's, it's something that is really treasured. I've been very lucky in my life, and uh, you know, all these, listen to, listening to everybody in my, you know, that got awarded uh, honorary doctorates and so forth, now did it because of their own effort. I essentially got it for other people's efforts because I always played and, and was part of a team. And in business, it's very rare that you can, by yourself, you make massive mistakes, but other people sort of guide you and so. And I've had tremendous guidance in my life, starting firstly with my family, who are also, I think, astonished that I stand up here and so, except my wife, <laughs> uh, Christelle, my, my parents-in-law, my uh, in-laws sitting here, uh, really helped. And it's, it's part of that team effort, really, to, to get things done. And uh, as I've said, I've been very lucky. Johan, uh, my, my first major job being vice, uh, vice chancellor at the University of Pretoria, your dad was the chancellor. And of course, he made me come up here regularly to Flear the Cup, which I, of course, did very, very gratefully. <laughs> and uh, to taste some wine, but to have a dinner where I had to tell what's happened in the past month, and they'd got instructed on what to do in the next month. <laughs> and uh, well, because where would a 40-year-old know how to run a university properly? And uh, so we had great times. It was always about others and people who guided and helped and so forth. And at Sunlam, of course, you know, they were great people. And, uh, and a platform and so, it, is, it was really about unlocking the, the potential. And the one thing I've learned about life is you, if you want to win, you have to get the right people around you and you have to bet on them. If you have them, don't tell them what to do. Really allow them to do what they think is right and rather support them. And if I look and I don't want to make a long story in life, you know, I've heard this tremendous story from Franklin. Uh, I remember when you arrived in Washington, Franklin, I don't know whether you remember, but one of the first people who had a house was Christelle and myself. We were there at the World Bank at the time. So we had a great discussion about life, and I can't speak as eloquently as him on and or as philosophical, mainly. But there are things that we have to address and that we have to do. The first one is really what makes you win. It's the people that you put around you. Get the right people and support them. Secondly, if we want to make this country work, and this is my little bit of philosophy, there are two things that we have to do. We have to get education going. We have to get that dream that you speak about. We have to get that going. So it's about education, and this university is probably best place in this country to really live that part of the dream, for people to live the dream and to get there. So for me, it's a tremendous honor to be part of that. The second part is we have to create jobs because education without jobs is just a substantially bigger disaster. Then you have well-qualified people who are disillusioned, whose dream has been taken away, as Franklin said. Those two things go hand in hand. And in business, whatever we do, we have to do that. We have to focus on education from the beginning to the end, and we have to create jobs. That's the job of business. And if we can't narrow the gap that we have between the haves and the have-nots, this country will not be worth a place living in 10, 15 years from now. This is still the greatest place to be. I've left twice in my life. I've been back here. I've been very lucky. Great people from the family going forward. But that is the stuff we have to address. We have to bridge that divide, create that twinkle in the eye where people with nothing can be educated and can get a job. That's the challenge. Thank you to the university for honoring me. I'm still young. Maybe I can make a little contribution here as well. Thank you. <laughs>